Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to our webinar this morning. Uh, today, we're talking about P6 Loader and how it can make your life with P6 easier and faster. My name is Ian Nicholson. I'm based in Calgary. Um, I have 30 years of experience working in various industries. Most of what I do these days is in the risk and turnaround industries. Um, and I work with um, uh, integrating various systems together. I work in, in project risk and things like that. And um, as I said, I've been doing this a very long time. So uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the challenges that, that we found um, working with people, clients with their P6. Uh, joining me today is Sue Familia. Um, Sue is in, uh, in Wyoming. Um, Sue has many years experience as well. Um, she has a background in project controls and uh, business administration, and she works in a number of industries as well. Now, as we go through the uh, presentation this morning, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type them in the questions box and we'll make sure we get them answered for you. Um, it won't be possible for you to answer or ask questions during the presentation, but if you type them in the box, we'll make sure we get them answered at the end. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what happens when people use P6. Now, um, P6 has been around a long time. Um, I started working with P6 in 1999, so it's been 25 years that P6 has been available. Um, but there's things about it that, that people struggle with. And part of that is because it's a very large, very powerful system, but it's not always easy to get information in and out of that system. So the first one people struggle with is administering P6. So we have clients who have multiple P6 databases with multiple users. Um, in some cases, it's the multiple databases is being driven by different business needs or different clients, and they wanna make sure that they're completely firewalled between those clients. Uh, maybe they have a high security requirement, so only certain people have access to one P6 environment, but many people have access to another environment. And it can be a real struggle keeping all of those in sync, you know, creating layouts that, that match between all of those databases, creating user profiles that align between all of those resources, resource costs and resource availabilities. All those kind of things can be a real struggle within P6. Now with P6 Loader, it makes it very easy because you can actually move layouts between uh, environments. You can uh, create a standard user profile that you can just move and, and upload to each new environment as you create it. You can even back up everything within an environment. So it makes it very, very easy when you've got multiple environments in P6. The next thing is developing projects. A lot of people struggle um, with setting up template projects and, and creating dictionaries. Um, you know, we have one client who has some very large projects and every time they have a new project, they have engineering work packages and they have construction work packages and all of those things need to be loaded into P6 as activity codes. Um, and it's very difficult to do that. Um, and you don't want to have somebody typing, you know, 4000 engineering work packages into your uh, into your system. But using P6 loader, you can just load them immediately. Similarly, the WBS, you know, you might have a project with a very complicated WBS structure. Using P6 Loader, you can just load it right in there. Uh, the next thing is data integration. Now, one of the things that people always struggle with was how do I get my data in and out of P6? So perhaps I have a, an ERP system that has, you know, all of my, my, uh, uh, work orders in it for my upcoming turnaround. How do I get all that information into P6? Well, because P6 Loader allows you to run information through Excel, if you can dump the information out of this ERP system into uh, a CSV file or an Excel format file, you can then very easily format it in for P6 Loader, running some macros or just manually changing some columns around and then you can upload that into, into P6. Now that also gives you the advantage of if you're thinking about doing a data integration, before you sit down and write a bunch of code and find that it doesn't work very well, you can also use P6 Loader to do mockups. So you can 
Come up with a business process that you think is going to work to move data between systems. Use P6 Loader to test it out. And if it does work, then you can sit down and actually write yourself a permanent integration. So you can use it as an integration tool or you can use it to prototype um, a permanent integration tool. The next thing people struggle with is team engagement. Now, what do we mean by team engagement? Well, a lot of times people want to have users accessing P6. Perhaps they want them to provide updates to their part of a schedule. Um, but what those of us who work in P6 every day kind of lose uh, focus on is that not everybody knows P6. And there is, in fact, a pretty steep learning curve for P6. So what we can do is we can let those people access P6 through Excel. Um, so all they have to do is update their activities in Excel, and we can upload that into P6 using P6 Loader. Now, some of our clients do this all the time. They actually use P6 Loader as almost a, an intermediate point where they can download all of the activities that need to be updated. They can split them up into smaller spreadsheets, email them out to people. People can update their progress, email the spreadsheets back, and then they upload it into P6 using P6 Loader. So virtually everybody knows Excel, but training a lot of people on P6 just to do a couple of updates a month is probably not the best uh, use of their time. Now, the next one is consistent portfolios. What do we mean by consistent portfolios? Well, we get calls every week from people who want to leverage their P6 data. Perhaps they want to set up some, some corporate dashboards, or they want to um, set up some AI processes, or they want to um, leverage information from a number of different systems into one BI, uh, one business intelligence solution. Now, in order to get that information out of P6, we need to have consistency in the data, which means we need to set up project codes, user-defined fields, activity codes. Again, as I mentioned before, we can upload all of those things in to P6 using P6 Loader, but it goes further than that. We can also go and backfill. So if we need to go back and backfill the last five years of projects with a new activity code, and all of the baseline projects with that same activity code, we can do that using P6 Loader. And so we can very quickly get your P6 environment kicked into shape using P6 Loader to make sure that we have some standardization. So let's talk a little bit about how it works. So the first thing is you have many options as to where you're gonna install P6 Loader. If you have an on-premise P6 system, you can just install P6 Loader in the same place as your P6. But maybe you have a hybrid setup where uh, P6 is in the cloud and P6 Loader is going to be on-prem or vice versa. Um, or maybe everything's in the cloud. Now, the advantage to P6 Loader is because it uses the web services associated with P6, uh, it can, you can make any combination work. So it can all be on-premise. One or the other can be in the cloud. It can all be in the cloud, and P6 Loader will work with your P6 regardless. Now, just to give you a little bit of history on how people have tried to integrate with P6 over the years. So when P6 came out, again, 25 years ago, the first thing people said was, this is great, but how do I get my information in and out of the system? So they looked at what was available, and they saw that there was an XER process built into P6. Now, the XCR is Primavera's standard import-export format. And the idea is you can export a project out of one database and import it into another database. Um, now, people said, well, if, they, if I can do that, why can't I manipulate the XCR? Why, why can't I go in there and start making changes to the XCR? The problem is you have to be very careful with that XCR because there's no validation of the data coming in to P6. So to give you an example, we had a client who was working with uh, XERs between themselves and their engineering company. Now the engineering company had defined an activity code at the EPS level because it was specifically for this client. When they were sending it to the client, they were taking the XER and they were changing that activity code from being uh, scope 
EPS to Scope Global. Now, what happened was somebody, when they were doing it, spelt the word global incorrectly on one of the codes. So instead of, you know, uh, they just they just uh, reversed two letters in the word global. So they read it into P6, and then all of a sudden, every time someone tried to log into P6, it would crash with an error message. Now, what was happening was it was it had imported to the new P6 system, but when the, a user logged in and it tried to read the activity code dictionary, it came across a value it didn't know what to do with, and it just shut down. And it took us about a day of searching to fit and, and looking at the error message to figure out exactly what had happened and fix the error in the database. Um, so you have to be very, very careful when you manipulate XCRs. Now, the other problem with XCRs is that, as I mentioned before, they are project specific. So none of your global data um, uh, comes in. Uh, there's no data validation, as I mentioned before. If you make changes to it, um, Oracle will not support that. They've already said that a few times, that if you manipulating XCRs, you're on your own. Um, and the other thing is that in order to do an import, you have to be a project super user with um, import capability at the global level, which basically means that there's no security around what you're doing. So there's nothing to prevent you from importing all kinds of things and changing all kinds of things. So a couple of years after P6 came out, Primavera came up with the SDK or Software Developers Kit. Now, this was a big improvement over XCRs. It did let you access global data. It did validate the data. Um, it did allow selective extraction and it allowed multiple projects. There was a couple problems with it, though. The first one was that um, you had to be an admin super user to use it. Uh, the assumption at the time was nobody but an admin super user would need to use it, so they didn't put any security around it. So the problem with that was you could do anything. So you couldn't limit people as to what they could do. And Oracle ceased support for the SDK probably about seven or eight years ago now. So it's no longer supported by Oracle. And it, you know, although it somewhat still works, um, it doesn't work very well anymore. So to replace the SDK, Oracle came out with a P6 Excel import utility. So that sounds a lot like P6 Loader. It does validate the data. It is supported by Oracle. It does allow you to selectively extract and load. But again, it doesn't let you. Um, uh, access global data. It's ba basically project data and resources only. Um, and it doesn't let you, um, it doesn't have any security around it. So basically, if you have access to use it, you have access to do everything. So again, it's there's no security built into it. So again, it's somewhat limited. Eventually, Primavera also came up with a P6 XML import functionality. Now, this is a lot like the Excel import. It's just it's just a little more flexible. It does have data validation. It is supported by Oracle. Um, it allows you to do multiple projects. Um, but again, it doesn't access global data, and there's no security around it. So again, if you can import, you can import whatever's in there. Now, P6 Loader, on the other hand, uh, checks all the boxes. So because we write it through Primavera Web Services, you can access global data, you can access project data, you can access just about anything in the entire system, but you can only access those things that you've been given security access to. So, for example, if I don't have the access to edit a WBS in P6, I can't edit a WBS using P6 Loader. All the data is validated when it comes in and it's fully supported by Oracle, because again, we're using their web services. You can choose to extract only what you need, and you can ex extract as few or as many projects as you like. Now, we have subject areas within P6 Loader. So we have a global subject area, which is all your high-level Primavera settings. We have a resources and roles area. We have project and activity in area. And we have utilities to help you manage the P6 system. So here's a list of all the things that we do in here, and I'm not going to go through the whole list, but you can see we, there's a lot of things that we can do in here. Um, a couple of things I want to focus on, though, under the utilities section, we have the ability to read XERs or XML files. If someone sends you those, you can read them into a P6 loader. You can clean up risk types and POBS elements. Um, you can also run job services 
So after you do a load using P6 Loader, you can reschedule the project, for example. And this is something that a lot of our clients do where they have a major data upload, they'll then either schedule or level the project. You can also manage calendars. You can roll calendars down. So you can make global calendars into project calendars. Um, you can also move layouts and reports from one database to another, um, and you can back up your database. So all of these things give you a lot of capability within the, the, the tool uh, to manage your P6 system. As I mentioned before, we have global topics, project topics. We also have user topics, which would be your, your user profiles. So if you want to create new users, we want to assign them a profile, give them access to certain things, you can do all of that through P6 Loader. Um, you can also um, change their permissions. You can copy somebody's profile from one database to another, as I mentioned before. So it's very easy to, ma to manage within P6 Loader. Now, when it comes to projects, you can extract one project or many projects. You can, you can choose projects and or baselines, and you can choose resource assignments and expenses. All of those things can be extracted from P6 using P6 Loader. Once you've extracted the information, you can manipulate it within Excel however you want. You can run macros on it. You can uh, make changes. You can write formulas, any of those kind of things in Excel. And then you can just run it back into P6 and you're done. All right, so let's take a look. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to give Sue access and Sue is going to show you in P6 Loader, all of the functionality that I talked about. You should have controls. In. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Ian. Um, so let me get my windows sh shared here, my screen. And um, essentially, can everyone see my P6 Loader window, uh, Ian? Looks good, Sue. Okay. Thank you. Um, so with p6 loader it's accessed through a, a url whether it's on premise in the cloud wherever and essentially what we can do is um, we can point it at more than one database so if you do have more than one database that you're working with or work with um, regularly um, you can choose which database you want to be working in so um, for my purposes uh, today i'm going to log into this uh, demo 2020 um, database and just go ahead and sign in. Now, the credentials you use to sign in are the same credentials that you have to sign in for Primavera because, again, it does go through that API and it's going to validate that user um, and what their responsibil responsibilities are, what they're allowed to do in P6, um, in P6 order as well. So um, just to kind of... Uh, give kind of an overview of the modules and the things that that we can touch, if you will, it, with P6 Loader. Um, I'm going to go into my extractions area, and this is where you can see all of the, the different available options you have in working with the data in P6. So as Ian mentioned, we have, you know, that those that user information. So global and project security profiles. Um, if you needed to, to move those from one database into another, maybe you're spinning up a new database. Um, the same thing with just the users themselves, the, the responsible managers that they are assigned to, um, and, and, and so on. So everything that you need to do for users. But again, if you don't have access to work with users, you're not going to be able to do this with P6 Loader as well. Then we have our global information, and our global information um, is uh, pretty easy. I mean, even the stuff that <clears throat> is, is maybe a little rare for some people to, to use, like benefit plans and spending plans, you could still touch those. You could still work with those um, if you do use them with P6. So we've got our OBS and our EPS structures. Um, we can work with notebooks at every level. Um, we can work with the codes. Um, whether project activity um, and user-defined fields as well. Um, we have a couple of um, 
utilities here. One is the activity code roll down, which I'll show you um, in just a little while. Um, we can also merge UDFs, um, and this would be in a case where you had maybe several or one or, or more than one um, user defined field that was set up for, for perhaps the same information. Um, you could merge those and um, keep those values um, after the merge in your project. We can work with calendars, cost accounts, et cetera. So just about anything you would want to work with at the global level, including roles and resources. So with roles and resources, we can do units of measure, we can do limits, rates, um, even work with teams if you're, if you're interested in that for the um, web version of P6. We can work with risk information. Um, and again, some of our other utilities that we have in this usage area is um, we can look at where certain pieces of, of global data are being used and if perhaps they're obsolete or not, because we all know as we get, we have our, an older uh, database and, and we put more and more projects into it and, it and it evolves. Sometimes you have data that's no longer pertinent and it's still out there um, in your dictionaries and things like that. This is going to help you analyze that and see, you know, is there, are there things that I need to get rid of? Um, are there things maybe that I want to combine because they are the same thing? Um, and then, of course, we have our project information, um, including working with baselines. So um, you can work with baselines um, while they are still attached to a project in P6. We can bring those uh, that information out, that data out for those activities, relationships, et cetera. Um, and then, of course, our activities. So um, activity information, um, we can load in some actuals, we can do relationships, um, we could do period actuals, um, which I'll, I'll also show uh, an example of that as well in updating. So if I am working with a project level piece of information, um, I'm of course going to want to take a look at certain projects, whether that be one or many on any type of extraction or if I'm loading things in with P6 Loader. And what I have here on the right is essentially my EPS structure with my projects in it. So I could either drill down to what I want by you know, opening up these uh, little uh, arrows or I could type in and search and it's going to highlight for me. So I do have, you know, some flexibility there. And then once I do have, I didn't, you know, where I have my projects, I can see what state they're in, status, active, and if with all of these, let's say I wanted to grab these all, um, I could simply check mark them all, and then I could bring out the information that I have check marked on the left for those projects. So just as an example um, of bringing something out, um, I am going to actually bring out a, a, a sheet that I've already created out there because I want to send that out to the people who are working on my project and doing some updates for my project. So what I can do is on these little, uh, these modules that have a pencil on them, I can actually click that pencil and decide what fields am, do I want to bring out? Because of course, on an activity, you have a whole lot of fields that, that could be set, can be dealt with. And so therefore the activity sheet is a fairly long sheet. It, it has a lot of columns involved in it. So if I click that little pencil, what I can do is I can go in and, and on the fields that I would normally have, I can pick and choose what I want. So just like in P6, the left is what is available and the right is what is um, what is going to be pulled out. So by default, everything's going to be pulled out. So if I didn't need to have some of these things, let's say um, I'm not doing any planning. So I'm just going to, or I don't have Unifier. I'm just going to select those and I'm going to move those over. Um, and 
I don't have Prime or OPC as it's called now. And I, I don't need any of this informational stuff. I can pick and choose. So these are the only things that are going to come out on that sheet. I can also decide what user-defined fields I want to work with at the activity level. Maybe not all of my user-defined fields are pertinent for this project. I can decide which ones are pertinent and move the rest over. So let's just, you know, select some and move them over. So the ones on the right, again, are the ones that are going to be um, brought out as part of my extraction. And then the same goes with my codes. There may be codes that, that you want and codes that you don't want. So you can pick and choose those. Now, once you have those selected, what you can do is you can go and you can save that. So whatever settings you have in the sheet, as well as what's checkmarked in your modules, you can go and you can save that as a definition, meaning you don't have to set that up anymore. You've set it up once, you can use it over and over. So each time I update, I can use this definition. So I already have that in here. So I'm going to, uh, let's see. Someone, I have a few more things out here than I used to. I'm going to go look at my update example here. Now, another idea we have is when you're talking about definitions, we have the ability to have global definitions that are available to everyone um, who uses P6 Loader. I have a team definition, meaning that if I have certain teams that work on certain projects and I only want to allow that team to see any of the saved definitions, I can assign it to that team. That user gets assigned to that team and they have access to take a look at those definitions. And then of course we can do um, our individual ones. So I'm just gonna grab this update example here and I'm going to load it because I've already set it up, I've already saved it, now I just wanna use it. So I can go ahead and I can load. It's going to ask me those other changes that I had um, that I showed you just a moment ago when I opened up the little, the little pencil. I, I want to discard those. So I'm going to say, yes, I want to discard them. Apply this definition. So now when I go into my definition, I can see that it's already been set up for me on what I want to have come out. So I also, this is for a particular project. I also have my projects that I'm going to use to extract this information. So every time I want to send out a sheet to one of my, or to my team and say, hey, update th these projects, I can simply extract, I can apply this and I can extract that information. And it's going to build out a sheet for me that's ready for me to send out for them to put their progress on. So once it's done, I can download it and that's going to open it up in uh, Excel for me. So in Excel, whoops, and it came way over here. So I'm gonna bring it back. Nope, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Let me see if I can find that. There we are. Okay, went on my other screen. Um, what it's brought out is are the, are the things that I have told it to bring out. And what's great about this is that it's going to um, essentially say what, what is, what's happening on this sheet here. So I have a type and it looks like I've, I missed a couple that I should have had on here. Um, interesting. Somebody must have, uh, done something with that. But I'll, sh I'll show you, I have one that's, that's already uh, sent back to me for, for an example. Um, but it's essentially going to bring out everything that you've told it to. So let's say I have, um, you know, I, I wanted that type to come out. I wanted the start date and the finish date. I wanted that duration out there, um, et cetera. So that when somebody is updating, they can go in and they can take a look and, and, and adjust these as needed. Now I'm going to have to fix this for my next one. So I apologize. I'm just going to bring up the one that I already have and, and show you what I've got going there. 
Here it is. That looks a little better. All right. So with our project, um, with this particular one, I've pulled out my activity and my resource assignment period actuals. I've sent this out to whomever I want to have update this, and they have updated it and sent it back to me. So all I needed to send out to them was, you know, the project ID, the activity ID. I've got my name and my status was not started all the way down because none of these have been started um, before this load. They can put in a percent complete. They can put in the actual start. I've included the plan start and, and finish dates so that it's a reference for them. Um, I could even suspend and resume that. Now, in conjunction with this update, it has been several months since that update, since I've, I've had an update. So I may want to put my updates into different periods or different buckets um, for my project. So I'm going to do that for um, several of my activities on two different projects here. So I'm going to update my, um, my earthworks here on this activity in my first project. Um, and I'm gonna split that into two different months here. And then for my second project, I have another activity that I need to put amounts in, units in for each one of the uh, resources in here as well. So I'm just gonna pop over to P6 and we're going to take a look at the projects that I'm going to update here. I'm going to open those up and I'm going to need to put on another layout. And we're going to take a look at those. So on my um, financial, my, my spreads that I'm doing, um, you can see nothing has started. Um, and I don't have anything in any of my, my unit buckets right now. So when I upload everything um, on my update, I can, I, it will update it in P6 and my updates are done. So the way that I do that is I've saved that spreadsheet. And that spreadsheet I'm going to upload. So I'm going to go out and, and find where it is. And it is right here. I'm going to select it. And I'm just going to tell P6 Loader to upload that data for me. P6 Loader is going to go out. It's going to work on it. Um, when it's completed, it's going to tell me it was completed successfully. I can go into uh, P6 and refresh my data because this does hit the database. I need to bring that those updates back in. And then I can take a look at the progress that was entered with that particular load. And I do have my, my buckets that have been uh, populated there, as well as my other ones for uh, all of my resources as well. So um, just one of the things that you can do with P6 Loader. Now, another thing um, is, you can you can set up a project from you know start to finish uh, and 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 do it all at one time. You can piecemeal it. Um, let's say you only have certain things that you only have maybe your WBS structure that you are working with and you need to get that loaded in. You could do that and then as you get activities, go ahead and do that. But in this case, I'm going to show you everything that I can do and I'm going to create a project with all of its different elements at one time. So I've got this empty project. I've also got some resources um, that I'm going to need to come into this P6 loader parent here in my resource tree. I need those for my, uh, my project. And I'm going to set up a few other things as well. So just so you can see all the things, all the, the data that P6, can or P6 loader can touch, this is kind of going to give you a large, broad range of that. So I can, I can work on my WBS. I can have um, my codes uh, that I, I establish here. Um, I can do hierarchy, et cetera. 
Um, I can name it, I can sequence them, put them in some a, a particular order, um, and, and just assign everything I need to for my WBS. Now, while I'm here, um, let me just kind of explain to you what these different colors on the top of, of these headers is, is doing for me. So the red headers, or the background that's red, these are mandatory pieces of data for P6 loader to work with my WBS. So it's going to denote that for me. Now, if I needed to rename one of those, I have the option of these orange coded or orange uh, font uh, columns as well. This would be where I would need to, I could rename them because it has to go out, find it, and then rename it. So I, ca I can't just totally write it over here. However, the blue ones, I can just overwrite. So if I wanted to change the name of one of these WBS, I could just type it in um, to the field. It's going to go out. It's going to change that name for me. Now, in the case that I don't, I'm not working with any information in a column and it has a blue or a red or a gray color to it, I can actually just remove those. They aren't important for the loading of the data that I want to manipulate with P6 loader. I can just, I can remove those. So if I don't have any renaming or anything like that, I can remove those as well. Now we can work with activity codes. So I need some activity codes at the project level for this project. So I'm going to establish their names here. I'm going to set which project they're associated with. Um, and then on this next one, I'm going to actually populate the dictionary. So um, basically, uh, codes have a two-sheet uh, approach to them. One is to set up the code. The other is to establish the dictionary. Now, in adding activities, um, I set up which acti WBS I want it in. Um, I can I put in my ID, my name. Um, I can even use the functionality of P6 or of Excel, excuse me, um, where I've helped it create some of my names for me. So I've used this formula up here um, for doing an uppercase and a concatenation of three of, of these columns. And my three columns are my title, my uh, project code for area, and my project code for work package. Now, title is a column that P6 Loader does not understand. It doesn't know what title means. I can leave this column in my sheet and it will not hurt anything. Because if, when P6 Loader is coming across and it's reading these columns, it's going to go, oh, title, don't know it, skip it, and then continue with the rest of them. Another bonus is that you do not have to copy and paste the values for the results of your formulas. P6 Loader will, will load those results um, and not the formula itself. So you can maintain that formula in there and, and kind of keep, you know, kind of a history of how you came up with that. And, and if you need, you know, maybe something didn't work right and you need to go in and tweak it, you don't have to redo everything again. You can, you know, just just tweak that formula, and uh, and not have to recreate it um, because you had to use the values. I can set up expenses along with cost accounts um, as well. Um, in conjunction, I need cost accounts. I need a cost account structure for this particular project, so I can set that up as well. We can handle steps. Again, um, I have another activity that I need to have these same three steps that seem that are repetitive on these other activities. So I could copy these um, and paste them. Nope, that's not what I want. Insert copy values. And then I could take, you know, this particular uh, activity ID and, and say, okay, I also need that one to have those three as well. So really nice to be able to use some of that functionality in um, Excel. Now I also have calendars 
So I need to create a resource calendar for one of my resources or several of my resources. So I can uh, designate the type. Um, it can be, you know, resource project or global. Um, in this case, it is resource. Um, establishing those hours for that calendar. Um, defining what the work time is on that calendar. And then I have exceptions. Now, in a lot of cases, you know, it's not a big deal to put some of these exceptions in. However, in this one, this one is a rotating calendar. So if you've ever tried to set up a rotating calendar, you find that, you know, it's not a great thing to have to count. And, and if you miscount or if you misclick or, or something and, and you have to kind of start over and, and, and you're trying to do work time and non-work time, it can get a little cumbersome. So again, used that information or that functionality in Excel to help me out here. I have my start date and then I've used a formula to calculate the rest of my exception days or my days off to help me out here. So another great thing. And this is going to be more accurate because it's calculating it for me and I'm not having to count and click in P6. I have a resource code that I need to establish as well as um, a dictionary. And this one does have some hierarchy in it. And I need to create those resources I talked about under my P6 loader tree. So I'm going to create those resources, um, assign codes, uh, also going to assign that calendar that I just created. And then um, assign those resources as well. My project needs to have them assigned on some activities so I can assign those here. And I'm also doing some planning as, as uh, at the same time. I'm also establishing my relationships um, with, you know, my predecessor project ID and my activity ID, and then the successor as well. So not only can I do act, uh, relationships within my project, I can do cross project relationships as well. So I can establish those. Um, and then if I need lag, I can put my lag in. I can even set rates on my resources if needed. So um, with those effective dates, um, you know, put it out there for the ID, I can work with shifts, um, whatever I need to on my resource rates as well. So that's a lot, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load all this in and I'm going to create my project with everything I need for it. So I'm going to go to my upload again. I'm going to browse to my file, open it, and I'm going to upload. So P6 Loader is going to go out and it's going to create all that data. It knows the order in which to create the data so that it can assign it without me telling it that. It, it just, it knows. It knows it needs to do this first before it can do this. So if I go back to P6 now and I refresh my data, I'm going to find that my P6 loader tree is now filled in. I've assigned that rotating calendar in here. Um, also in my activities, I've got everything set up that I needed. I've got my calendars, I've got my durations, my steps um, are here, my uh, logic, my resources and roles, and my um, planning information that I, uh, that I put in there for those uh, activities as well. So I talked about um, being able to work with uh, resource or not resources, excuse me, baselines. We can work with resources and I showed you that, but um, for baselines. So I have another project that I've created a baseline on and I have the need to adjust that baseline. So I'm just going to switch my layout here really quick. And show um, my baseline, my project baseline, um, along with my um, information for my present project. And then I kind of have, have a control. And I've also put those variances in there as well. 
So on this project, not only do I need to make some adjustments, I'm just going to do some debits and credits, move some units and some costs around. Um, but I also have found work that I have and I need to reflect that in my baseline for my earned value. So I would go and I would pull that information out on my for my baselines. So, you, know, I, you can do that. You can pull out that, that, those activities on that baseline. So I can see here these ones with the dash B1. That is my project ID for my baseline. So I've brought out all of those activities. And not only have I done that, but um, I, I have helped that um, information extraction. Um, it, that's going to help me re, uh, move around those costs and those units. So essentially, I brought out my planned labor cost. That's originally what it, what it was there. I'm going to use functionality again in Excel to uh, debit and credit what I need to. And then what I'm going to load back in is this planned labor cost. And I've used a formula to make sure that my calculations are proper there, that they are okay. And then I did the same thing with my units. So um, it's going to calculate my units for me as well. Now on my found work, I have, I'm adding that found work to both my project as well as my um, baseline in this case. Um, not putting any, any types of uh, amounts or anything in there. Um, I'm just going to uh, add it to my project. So once I have that done, um, I've made all the changes I need to. I don't necessarily have to load back in every single one of these lines or rows for my project. I only have to load back the rows that I'm changing. So I could utilize um, what I've set up out here. Um, I have some, some highlights here. And um, so I could say I want to filter by the no fills and remove them. So delete them out of my sheet. And then all I would have left to load is just these couple of lines that I needed. Now, if you don't delete them from your sheet, the lines that you don't want to load, they will still load in. I'm not doing that in here because I, I just am showing you, you know, an example of that. But I, I would need to actually delete those lines from my, my workbook. So let's go ahead and make those changes to our project or our baseline and do those additions that add or put that additional work in. So again, going in, grabbing my uh, file, uploading it, and then going out to P6 and refreshing my data. And I can see my found work right here. I've got my additional, I had a little uh, work scope uh, code that I, I set on that. There's my found work. Um, and then I've got my debits and my credits. So I can see in my variations here where I debited and, cre debited and credited those amounts on several of my activities in here as well. So finally, what I want to do is I just want to do a quick um, show you how one of our utilities works. Uh, so I'm going to do, uh, I have a project that has some codes that have been assigned to it, and they are a bit messy. Um, what's happened is that I've had some that have been duplicated. Um, I have some that are at the, that were defined at the wrong level, and I, I just really need to clean that up. So this is going to be more something that, like maybe an administrator, this could be advantageous to an administrator. Um, I have my phase that's a global code, and I don't want that to be at the global level. I actually want that, want that at the EPS level. I have two equipment codes that have been um, created and assigned. I'll, uh, in, in my project, both of them have been assigned. So I need to make sure that, you know, not only do I combine these, but that assignment is going to, to hold for those. Um, same with my specifications. Um, they are both at the global level. Um, 
they're duplicated, I want to combine those and I want to push those down to my project level because I don't really need them available to every project or every project in my EPS. And my work order is also um, just important to this project itself. So I want to push that to the project level as well. So the sheet that I have that handles that is called the activity code roll down sheet. What you do is you put the scope of your original um, code, the name of it, and where you want to roll it down to. Now, if you want to rename it, you would put a, a new name in there and it's going to rename it as well. Now, in the case of phase, I'm taking it from global to EPS and I'm going to give it a new name of phase new. And I need to identify which EPS that is going to be moved to. Now, in the case of combining codes, what I do is I have to put my original in there and I have to put what scope. I want it rolled down to. Then I give it the same name. Both of them I give the same name. What that's going to do is it's going to combine that dictionary and put that dictionary and reassign that code called equipment in my projects. Also giving it the EPS ID that I want it associated with. Same with my specs. I want um, those to go from global to project and I'm going to combine them, giving them the same name. Now, in the case of my work order, I don't want to rename it. I, I want it to have the same name as what it was at the global level. So I don't have to put anything down here in this roll down name. I can keep that the same and it's just going to keep that uh, work order uh, code name the same. I'm giving us the projects, those ones that are going to the project level, I'm giving the project ID I want to associate them with. And then finally, on this last column, I'm, I'm telling P6Loader, what do I want to do with that original code? Do I want to keep it or do I want to delete it? So I'm going to keep these first ones here. But in the case of my work order, I'm just going to, I'm just going to delete that out at the global level. Now, these other ones, maybe I want to go back in and just make sure that I've assigned, you know, assigned them where they need to go. Um, perhaps this, I have specs in another project and I need to roll that down or, or something of that nature. So um, I just want to go check those out and then delete them after I make sure that everything is, is good with that. So let's see how this works. I'm going to go in and upload again. It's going to go in, it's going to move those around and reassign them. And then when I go back to P6 and refresh, I'm going to see that those codes are no longer assigned there. So I need to go in and look at my EPS codes. So there's my new equipment one that's combined, my new phase. Um, I can see here at, in my uh, activity codes that are at the global level, I no longer have that work order there. However, I do have it now in my project codes and I have my specs in my project codes as well. So when I say okay, I can see that they've been combined, reassigned, um, and now I've got everything cleaned up on my codes. So with that, I'm just going to take a look. Okay, so I have a question on how will it update the activity relationships. So on the activity relationships, um, on my new project development I have here, if I already have these set up, what I would need to do is I would need to define the new relationship and the relationship that I want to get rid of, I can have another uh, column here that I would put delete record. And then the relationship that I, I wanted to not be there anymore, um, I would put delete next to it. Then when I load this, it's going to delete the ones that I have indicated. It's going to create the ones that are, no, that are not there. So that's how you would manipulate and work with your relationships there. 
Um, another thing to note that when you are deleting um, in a file, um, there's kind of a safety net before you actually do that. You save it in the file, and then when you load that file, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to enable deletes here so that anything that is um, set to be deleted in your file, it, it's kind of a confirmation that, yes, I do indeed want to delete these. So um, you would need to enable the deletes and then upload. If you don't do this, it'll just it'll just give you a warning that you didn't check mark that and you did have deletes in that file. Um, any other questions? All right, um, I'm going to hand it back to Ian. And if there are any additional questions, be sure to, to put them in the chat and, and I can, Ian or I can try to answer those. Thanks, Sue. Okay, so just a quick wrap up. Um, we get a lot of feedback from customers about P6 Loader. Um, and the ones that we like to get are, are the ones like the one at the bottom that said, we finally got it. I wish we did this two years ago. This is from a client who hummed and hawed for two years about whether to buy it or not. Finally found a business case to purchase it and then found all kinds of uses for it. Um, you know, we find that we get comments from people who are in, in the project side. We get comments from people on the IT side. Generally, you know, people just love it, makes their lives so much easier. So some of the clients we work with, we've worked with clients all over the world um, from fairly small clients. In fact, we have a number of clients who are just schedulers who work on contract and just make it part of their toolkit all the way up to big corporations. Um, and, you know, we can help you with, with your implementation as well. So, you know, we have the tools like you saw today, but we also um, are a Primavera reseller. Uh, we work with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Uh, we provide implementation, integration services, um, and we're an Oracle certified training facility, as well as a Safran Risk certified training facility. So um, we're just about out of time. We have about two minutes left. If anybody has any other questions they would like to ask that, uh, or anything you'd like to, to, to discuss, um, feel free to put it in the questions section and we'll make sure we get it answered for you. All right, well, it looks like we've answered all the questions, Sue. So um, I'll just put a contact information here. Um, so if you do have any other questions or you'd like to uh, discuss how P6 Loader can help you out, um, Sue's contact information is there. Um, and as her email address and her phone number if you'd like to give her a call. If you're outside of Canada um, or the US, um, we have someone represents us in the, in the Philippines, that's Donna and her contact information is there as well. Um, someone's asked if we can send the slides. Um, yeah, if you want to reach out to Sue, uh, she can send them to you. Um, we'll also be sending a, a recording of this to the participants as well. Um, so if, if you need slides in addition, do let me know. Um, but you'll also get a recording. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. And uh, we're finishing right on time. So. Everyone have a good day and uh, thanks for your interest.